I'll be going over settings and optimization for Serato video and I'll be using my system as an example. So I've got a MacBook Pro Retina 15 inch from early 2013, 2.8 GHz Intel Core i7 processor with 16 gigs of memory installed, an Nvidia GeForce GT 650M with 1 gig of VRAM, and I'm running the latest version of Mavericks OS 10 10.92. If you haven't gotten around to running tests yet, hopefully this will help you gauge performance based on how similar or different your system is. Just for reference, I play my video clips off either the internal flash storage right here on my laptop, or I use my external solid state drive. So if you're on a Mac, I wanna show you this setting here in system preferences. If you go to energy saver, you'll see this checkbox here, automatic graphic switching. Well, you'll wanna turn that off because essentially what that does is lets your computer hardware use the highest performance graphics possible. And with Serato Video, you definitely want that. It does decrease battery life, but chances are you have your laptop plugged in anyway. So I'll briefly go over file preparation. And on Serato's website, they recommend MPEG-4 for performance and H.264 for quality. Well, after doing some comparisons, I would say that H.264 is a much better choice, and it's what we've adopted at Doc Optic. Just because if you look at the MPEG-4 results, you'll see a lot more artifacting and less overall image quality. We've got some free visuals on our website and you're welcome to download those, test them out on your computer. I'd say go with the 720p versions first and if your computer can handle it, you might want to try the 1080 and see how those run. Video in general taxes your system pretty hard so it's all about finding the right balance based on your needs and preferences. For our system specs we found that 720p works really well because it's a good balance of quality and performance. All right, let's get into the Serato video settings. If you click on the setup tab on the top right, go to expansion packs and make sure Serato video is highlighted and enabled. First, we have the output tab. The window aspect ratio setting depends on the type of footage you're using. So if you have 720p or 1080p footage, you'll want to go with the 16 by 9 ratio. If you have standard definition clips, you'd probably want to use 4 by 3. Go with what your projector or second display is outputting and whatever the majority of your clips are. So by changing the output quality setting, it trades image quality for a gain in performance. The lower your output quality, the better the performance. So let's go through each one. This is what poor looks like. Tons of aliasing and just not clear at all. Next we have low, similar, still not that great. This is the medium setting, getting somewhere but still a bit of aliasing. And the high setting which looks really close to the source, can't really tell the difference. Lastly we have best, which is essentially the source quality and definitely looks the best out of all the settings. And from our experience, we found that the high setting has the best balance between performance and quality. The best setting is ideal, but you're sacrificing system resources and frame rate. You want to take that into consideration if you plan on using it. Next is the recording quality setting. And this is the resolution of your recorded audio visual mix. For performance reasons, I'd say go with 720p or less, unless you feel your system can handle 1080p recording. Arrangement is what video channels you'd like to display for the Serato video output. Default is normal, but you do have two other options, the first being left and right. And this actually shows the left and right video channels of the currently loaded visuals. And the last option is to show all three, left, main output, and right video channel. Since this is showing on your projector or secondary display, you'd probably want to keep that on normal. The media treatment setting is how Serato Video displays video if it doesn't match your desired aspect ratio. 
So I'll show you an example. If you choose 4x3 while loading a 16x9 image, you'll notice that the black bars show up on the top and bottom here. And if we go and stretch it, it actually stretches the 16x9 image to fit the 4x3 aspect ratio. Center cut essentially cuts off the left and right sides of the 16x9 image and letterbox adds black bars to 16x9 footage. Unless you're dealing with different resolutions and different aspect ratios, I'd say it's safe to keep it on preserve. Just make a note of what the majority of your clips are and you should be good. Below media treatment is the V-Sync checkbox. And what V-Sync does is prevents a video artifact known as screen tearing. And what that looks like is your image is disconnecting horizontally between frames. By leaving it off, you could slightly improve performance, but in my opinion, I'd turn it off just because the image looks much cleaner with it on. So the checkbox to the right is frame blending, and this reduces jumps between frames by smoothing out the motion, especially if it's a bit slower, but at the same time, it takes up a lot of system resources. And I'll show you an example here. So I'll play this track so the visuals start loading, so keep an eye on how this plays normally. Everything looks good. And if we go back and click on frame blending, now you can see that there's this blur effect that's being added. And it's similar to motion blur, but much more subtle. So I prefer leaving this off just because it taxes the system pretty hard. But if your computer can handle it, it's a nice effect to have. So over here we have the buffer size slider and this controls how much of your system RAM is dedicated to Serato video buffering. Obviously if you have lots of RAM you can probably set this higher. Next is delay compensation and if you're having audio video sync issues you can play around with this value to get clips in better sync but this is more for uh, clips that have embedded audio in them. Let's move to the control tab. I'm going to restart this video clip here on the left. So we have the auto crossfade speed slider right here. And this controls the speed at which the video crossfader moves between video clips when pressing the left or right auto crossfade buttons. So if you see these buttons here, um, these are the auto crossfade buttons. And by pressing them, it automatically transitions between the two video clips. So the auto crossfade speed controls how fast the transition moves between each video clip. So this checkbox here on the bottom left, cursors crossfade video. What that does is assigns the left and right arrows on your keyboard to the auto transition between clips. So rather than click on those arrows, you can just use your keyboard. The contour faders checkbox adjusts the shape of the fade for your video channel and crossfader. So I'll be using my hardware in this example. And as you can see, the video channel fade is pretty standard. Now, if you adjust the up fader contour, you'll see that it fades out much slower. Do it one more time here. So it has a slow initial fade and then speeds up right at the tail end. Now I'll show you a crossfade using my hardware controller. So fairly standard fade. Now if I adjust the crossfader contour, you'll notice that when I fade it in, the visual loads in really fast on the fader. And that's on the full setting, so you can always adjust it to your taste. Next to the control tab, we have the effects tab. And in this box here shows your effect restrictions. What this is, is a display of the effects that are incompatible with your system setup. Since no restrictions are displayed here, that means you can run all the effects. This checkbox, enable audio linked video effects, is new in Serato Video 1.2. So now when you tweak audio effects live, you'll see that a video effect is applied to the visuals itself. So this one here is the filter, and this is the phaser video effect. 
This is a nice feature because it comes built in with your audio effects. Now I'll briefly go over the info tab. The video resolution left and right displays the source resolution of your currently loaded video clip. Buffered frames left and right displays the number of frames buffered for each visual loaded. Uh, this is determined by your buffer size settings in the output tab. So more frames are buffered, the higher the setting. Color space left and right is the type of color space your files have. Output resolution is the resolution of the Serato video output. So if I go full screen here, it'll change to 1920 by 1080 since that's what my display is currently set to. This will also change if you resize the Serato video output window. Output FPS or frames per second is the frame rate of Serato video output after effects, transitions, and faders are applied. These last two checkboxes here are for debug purposes and these are used for troubleshooting so see the Serato website for more information. So lastly, we have the Authorize tab, and this is where you'd initially enable the plugin and input your serial number. This is also used for deauthorizing Serato Video on whatever computer it's installed in. Hope this helped you become more familiar with the settings and optimize your system a little bit better for Serato Video. Play around with the settings and see what works for you. Keep in mind that adding effects and Changing the quality settings have a significant impact on performance. Visit DocOptic.com if you're looking for additional training for Serato video or some live visual content. And thanks for watching.